Hey guys, Mike Chamberlain here and welcome to another Tech Talk Tuesday. On today's Tech Talk Tuesday, we are going to talk about brakes, Meritor or Bendix brakes. Which is the best? Which should you put in your new Peterbilt truck? Well, when it comes to cost, there's really not much difference. Um, now I took a standard train tractor, did a comparison between um, Bendix brakes or Meritor drum brakes, and that's drum brakes on the front as well. Um, so it would be the 16 and a half by five inch steer axle brakes and the 16 and a half inch seven um, inch brakes on the rear, which is the standard brake shoe size um, that we use on, on heavy duty trucks. Now the difference in price um, on this chassis I did, it was a 389 low roof uh, tandem and the price difference worked out to $102 difference. So really basically not much difference. And that was $102 more for the Meritor Q Plus over your standard Bendix brakes. Now, a lot of people ask me, what about disc brakes? Well, disc brakes are great. Um, you're about a $2,561 option price. And I gotta say, when I say $102, this is, <clears throat> this is option price. Now, I know here when I talk about the option price, I usually figure because that's what um, the list price ends up being on the trucks. So like when salesman gives you a spec sheet and it's got all the pricing next to the options, that's list price. That's like MSRP, but you don't pay that price. List price is the price that we, we get and then our discounts come off of that. So I kind of joke that you almost need an abacus to figure out what the actual price is um, <laughs> because you really truly do. And I think it just, you know, it helps keep the baseline and then depending on your fleet size, um, whether it's on a car or a program and all the rest of it as to what your discounts are. So usually when I talk about a list price, real price, you know, right now in Canada, I figure, you know, real price is about 75% of what list price is. Cause of course we have exchange. If you're in the U S you're lucky, you don't have to deal with exchange rate when it costs comes to um, factoring out your list price versus what your actual price is. So, so in Canada, I'll figure real true cost, roughly about 75%. If I go by that, it's, it's pretty darn close. So when I say $102 more, in reality, it's probably like $75 more. So really not very much. If you like your Meritor Q Plus, then um, for 75 bucks, who cares? Um, now when it comes to disc brakes, um, when I put the Bendix disc brakes in and Meritor has disc brakes as well, Bendix is probably the one we've done the most. Um, certainly been in the industry a little bit longer. And um, that came in at $2,561 more to add disc brakes to this truck. <clears throat> what are the biggest benefits about disc brakes? Well, you don't have slack adjusters. You don't have cam tubes. You don't have to set your brakes. And uh, it's kind of fantastic. Um, one of the biggest benefits that I do like about disc brakes is the hotter they get, the harder they grab. You might come down a hill with your, your, with your rotors glowing and you might completely ruin your brakes, but you're probably gonna be able to stop at the end of it. It might cost you $10,000 to fix all the brakes, but, uh, but you'll come to a stop. <laughs> and, um, and that is the beautiful thing about, about a disc brake, because as your rotor gets hot, because it's clamping onto it, it actually swells, where with a drum brake, of course, as the hotter it gets and it uh, expands, your drum expands, and, uh, and of course, that's when you get your brake fade and start to lose your brakes, so. It's a great thing about disc brakes. Um, some of the negatives of disc brakes, of course, initial cost, because the disc brakes cost more. You know, you're gonna pay, well, approximately $2,000 more for your truck to have disc brakes. And now we're talking a tandem tractor here. Um, so it's gonna cost you more to get. Um, maintenance wise, it's a little more money for something as simple as, as a wheel seal. Now, on a highway truck, you probably don't do wheel seals that often. But certainly on a log truck and, and, and a heavy duty application, or if you've got lots of gravel road, um, you know, you're gonna do the odd wheel seal. Problem with the disc brake is because now you've got the caliper on there to do something as simple as a wheel seal, instead of it being like a, you know, an hour, hour and a half job, it now turns into probably like a four hour job because now you've got to pull your wheels and tires off. Then you got to pull your caliper off. Then you can pull your rotor and hub assembly off and, and change your wheel seal. Whereas with drum brakes, 
yeah, you pull your axle out, pull your hub and assembly out with uh, with wheels and everything attached, and and it's not a big deal. I mean, we've been doing wheel seals for forever, um, so that is an extra cost. Um, the other thing is um, cost to do repairs. Now, the beauty with disc brakes is it's it's easy to change brake pads. Like if if there's nothing wrong with your rotor, you can change pads quite easily. So that would be a bonus. Um, downside is if you screw up a rotor, it's going to cost more. Um, your calipers more, your rotors more, you know, just rough and dirty. You're probably seven, eight hundred dollars for a rotor and, and probably about the same for a caliper. Um, I don't have the exact cost offhand, but but it is more when you consider that, you know, you can buy a slack adjuster for probably one hundred and twenty bucks or a hundred bucks. Um, brake drum, you know, brake drums are one of those things that uh, are fairly cheap. I'm going to say anywhere from seventy five to one hundred dollars, depending where you're at. Um, so, you know, drum brakes are cheap to repair, but you also have a slack adjuster you have to grease, you have a cam tube you have to grease, um, you have to worry about um, cam tube reinforcement, um, you know, certainly I've seen it where trucks that get uh, thundered, worked hard, uh, beat on, because um, we work our trucks, to where you can actually break spiders, um, have cam tubes come loose, um, and all these things where the nice thing with the disc brakes your your brake pot goes right into the caliper So you don't you don't have your brake pot sitting out on the end of a cam tube You know bouncing up and down and you've got a span of you know 18 inches say well, maybe Yeah, probably 18 inches um, Of weight hanging off that spider, which is why you know you get the reinforced cam tube, but it's still a bunch of weight So disc brakes I like them. Are they for every application? No, Drum brakes, you know what? We've had them forever. Technology's pretty good, but you also have to set up your brakes and you could have brake fade. Now, if you've got a fleet of trucks, cost-wise, there could be some savings to sticking to drum brakes or there could be some, uh, I guess, ease of, of maintenance by eliminating two grease fittings and not having to have uh, your drivers um, set up your brakes. Because with disc brakes, you don't have to set them up. Now, that being said, you also want to look after your calipers because um, there is some maintenance to your calipers as far as just making sure they're lubed up so that they can automatically do what they need to do. But um, but overall, disc brakes are great. Um, <clears throat> drum brakes, um, they do a great job nowadays as well. It's more affordable and they're easy to work on. Um, now, whether you should have Bendix or Meritor, getting back to the initial conversation or topic of conversation here, or reason for my vlog. Um, Meritor disc brakes. I'm gonna go um, go out to the parts department and I'm gonna show you the difference between a Q plus shoe and a Bendix extended service. And there's also a difference between a regular Meritor Q shoe versus a Q plus shoe. Now, personally, I've been ordering lots in with Meritor because Meritor, when I was doing brakes, Meritor brakes were way easier to do. Um, with the Bendix brakes, it is a little bit different because you've got um, the way the pins go through your spider. Um, they're not as they they can be harder to change your rollers. Whereas in the Q, your rollers sit on top, and you know it's easy to change the rollers on a Q plus U. So it is a little more involved when you get into the uh, the Bendix brakes. Now I went out and talked to the mechanics, and I asked them. I said, you know, do you have a preference whether you do Bendix brakes or Q plus brakes? And they're like. Mm, not really. If one's going to be a bugger, it's going to be a bugger as far as the Bendix go, but um, but they didn't really have a strong opinion. Now, another argument for maybe not going to disc brakes is if you're an owner operator and you don't really have brake issues and you don't want to spend the money and it's like, how often do you do brakes? If you don't do brakes very often, of course, maybe that could be a could be an argument to go disc brakes as well. If you don't do brakes very often because you look after your brakes and and uh, you don't wear them out quickly, that could be an argument to to go with disc brakes versus you know sticking with drum because you know drum is going to be more affordable to um, to do brakes. But um, okay, guys, let's go out to the parts department and I'll show you the difference between a Meritor Q and Q Plus brake shoe as well as a Bendix brake shoe. And just like that, we are now with the brake shoes. So this is what we will call a Q series shoe. Note the thickness, the um, 
where your rollers attach. Um, so that is what is a Q shoe. A lot of trailers use the Q style shoe and this is a Q plus Ugh. as I pull it out. Now, if you look at the difference between the Q plus versus a regular Q, the uh, Q plus are quite a bit thicker. Um, you know, you've got the same rollers and um, Q plus is a little bit thicker, hence the plus. Q, Q plus. Personally, I've always like the Q plus. Now this is your Bendix brake extended service. So I'll just turn it this way, being sure not to uh, <laughs> not to get them mixed up because then I'll really be in trouble. But um, when you look at the Bendix extended service, that is a nice thick lining. I'm gonna say, shoot, it's almost as much as a, eh, it almost, it's hard, tough call. I'd have to get out a tape measure or whatever to see if if that's more than a Q plus, but it's pretty darn close to being the same. But, um, you know, different roller. They've, you've got the, the bigger roller here um, and, uh, and the smaller one on this side. Is it smaller? Well, it's about the same, but certainly bigger on that side and that's the one that you can't change. So, um, when it comes right down to it, which is better is personal preference. Now, what I like to do and this is what I recommend, is if you've got um, Eaton diffs, go with Bendix brakes. If you've got Meritor diffs, go with Q Plus brakes. I've kind of been leaning a little bit towards Meritor lately with some things, um, but you know, it's like the, the yin yin yang pros and cons. There's pros and cons to, to going with each. But the one thing I do know is don't put Bendix brakes with, um, Meritor rear diffs. I did that for a customer and not that it's a big problem as far as you know <laughs> Doing the brakes as it stops But the one issue that I had on this customer's truck is there's just a little bit bigger gap between the dust cover and your brakes Which if you're on highway, let's face it doesn't matter But he's off-road he's hauling logs and it seems to pick up rocks in the brakes all the time so when he's stopping he's got that ee and every time I see him he reminds me about it and I will never, ever, ever do that again for him because otherwise I will be in trouble. But um, we've tried, you know, bigger grommets, but there's just a little bit of a gap where, where the dust cover goes around the cam tube because it's a Bendix Spider on a Meritor diff. So it's not quite perfect. So yeah, Bendix brakes on a Meritor diff, you probably got squeaky brakes. And I'm betting if you got squeaky brakes right now, yeah, you might want to check. You might have Bendix brakes on Meritor, or maybe it's the other way around, and maybe you've got, you know, Eaton diffs, and you've got um, Meritor brakes, so, or Q+. But um, anyways, that's my opinion on Bendix versus Q+. Which is better? Ah, it's up to you. Which is going to do the best job? They're all going to stop. It really comes down to personal preference, and personally, I like Q+, because when I was doing brakes, it was a lot easier to do Q+, I found. And the other thing you want to make sure you do, if your truck was ordered with Q+, do not put Q shoes on. They will fit, but the problem is, is because your 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 brake drums were built for Q+, you're, gonna, um, you're not going to have enough uh, brake adjustment. So no Q shoes with a Q plus drum. So you can put Q plus shoes with a Q drum if it's a little bit worn. But um, anyways, that's my opinion. So anyways, guys, Thanks for coming to this Tech Talk Tuesday. Till next Tuesday, Mike out. Peace. Later. Bye. Hang loose.